I go by the name Damilola, but you can call me that fresh. And I welcome you all to Design Charts. Design Charts is an activity, a bi weekly webinar that we do under the Design Beyond Art community. Design Beyond Art is a community that aims at helping designers learn design from problem problem solving perspective. Basically, we are preaching the idea of design beyond the surface of art because we believe that design is more than just operating Photoshop, operating Corel Draw, or any design software, or just making things beautiful. We understand that design has to do more with our day-to-day -day activities, with how things are being, are being created, because everything made was designed. And if we don't have the mindset of problem solving, um, to me, it does not really seem like we are really designers. You know, we can be artists because artists are, artists just want to do things to express themselves, to to do things to create to create certain emotions or for people to just enjoy it, not necessarily for it to 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 come with some form of functionality. But we believe that design has some more problem solving approach to it, and that is what we try to do. Like I've always said that. There are so many activities that we plan to bring into this community and design chat is just one of those activities. So design chat, what we do basically is we talk about everything and anything design. We all come together, learn together so in order for us to grow together. And tonight's section is an AMA section, AMA section with one of the industry's finest, the industry's biggest someone that I personally respect, not just myself, a whole lot of people respect him in the design industry because of what he has been doing, how much he has been, he has been useful to the growth of many people. Many creatives in this industry will testify to how much Satol Alabi has been impactful in their growth. And one of the reasons why I brought him here today to come and share his knowledge with all so because of the fact that many times I have referenced a lot of his lessons, a lot of his teachings in this community or in some other private um, engagement that I do have with designers. And some, it, it is sometimes it's, uh, it baffles me sometimes. Or should, should I say, I, I wonder sometimes when designers say that they don't know Tola Alabi, I'm like, seriously, you are a designer, you don't know Tola Alabi. Like when, when someone says they don't know Chris Do. I feel like it is still understandable that Chris Doe is outside Nigeria. But as a Nigerian creative, oh, as a matter of fact, I, I would like to say that as an African creative, how would you not know Tola Alabi, right? So, this, which is one of the reasons why I have brought him here tonight. For everyone who might be meeting, who might be meeting him for the first time, so Tola Alabi is a career mentor, he's a life coach, and he's a thought leader. I mean, for many of us, we call him the Logo King. The Logo King, right? If you ever hear the Logo King, Tola Labi is the one we are referring to. He is the person we are referring to. He is, he is someone that I really, really respect a lot. Someone that I have consumed a lot of his content. I've consumed a lot of his content, not just his content, a lot of other people. And he is just one of those people that has inspired me a lot. As a matter of fact, he is one of those people that also inspired this program, this initiative, this movement. Because I listened, I, I listened to one of his podcasts that say that, that he, he, he does what he does to inspire other people to do things like this so that things like this can also inspire other people to do more things like this. And then the, the industry can, can grow and expand from that. And I'm, I'm glad to say, I am happy to say that that is happening. That is happening already. And Sir Tola Labi, I use this uh, medium to welcome you into our midst, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, please let us welcome Sir Tola Labi, please. Let me see your, any form of, any way that, any way that you can welcome him. Let us welcome him. You're with, welcome, sir. With yes, sir. Any form of yeah, emoji yeah. or anything. You are most welcome, sir. We love you. Namaste, sir. Well, thank you for the welcome. Well, thank you very much, guys. Um, thank you, The Fresh. Yes, sir. For having welcome, me on this sir. today. Yes, sir. 
thank you very much for showing up. Thank you very much for showing up. All right, guys. All right. Thank you very much. So every, every other thing you can put it in the chat section. So let's let's have a clear air now. So, sir, before we proceed, before we go fully deep into into today's business, there is quite a lot of questions that people have dropped, and I have tried as as much as possible to kind of match some questions together to reduce the length of questions. However, we still have quite a number of questions here, and I will try to like make it uh, brief. However, I would like us to start with your journey so far, because for 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 many people, aside from few of us that have been privileged to have made researches and come across your contents and known you for quite some time, some people might be knowing, hearing about you, seeing you, or even learning about you for the first time. Sir, can you please share some light to us as like a, your journey so far as a designer and um, as a thought leader, as how you have transitioned, how you started and how you have transitioned, because I know you, there, there has been a lot of transition from time to time in the course of your career. Can you please brief us a little about that, sir? Um, yeah, okay. Um, I, I, guess, I guess, first of all, I just want to say thank you for um, the fresh for having me here. Thanks yes, to this community, Design Beyond Art, yes, for having sir. me here. It's an honor to be here. That's Thank true. you, sir. It's always an honor to talk with designers, creatives, business people. And um, you're saying some people don't know me. Well, there, there, there are quite a number of people that don't know me. And, you know, the, the truth is, it's, it's, for, for me, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a function of how big the world is. And... Um, um, you know, it's 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 not it's not really about scale, about how many people know you or how many people don't know you, but it's about the people that know you. What do they know you for, mm. and uh, and how impactful have you been in their life? So even for me, where I am right now in my life, I'm 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 trying to put less emphasis on scale, and put more emphasis on impact. You understand because scale to a very large extent can be a very tormenting thing where um we, we are tormented by scale a lot so you look at your instagram following you're like oh man i have only two thousand followers but mr this or this guy tunji has has eight thousand and his work is not better than mine hmm. you understand yes, or you sir. look at oh this person is being paid this much and i'm just being paid that much so i'm not doing well so so we kind of look at life we kind of look at the relevance of life based on skill. But skill is not as important as impact. And um, if I'm going to leave that to the story I'm going to tell about my life, um, well, I, mean, I started out in graphic design about 18 years ago, and that was when I left university. And I realized, like so many of us, I realized I spent four years in the university doing something that I really wasn't interested in which was architecture at that point in time. I knew I didn't want to be an architect for the rest of my life. But then, you know, when you go into university, you kind of feel you know what you want to do. And you come out of Nigerian university and you feel more confused than you were when you went in. And that's how I felt when I came out of university. So I was just looking for myself and thinking of what to do. And I remember I'd had an experience with a friend of mine in university who was designing then. And that was the first person I saw doing graphic design. And he introduced me to graphic design, told me about a software called Corel Draw. I didn't even know where to find the software. So I started using what I could get my hands on, which was PowerPoint. The first few designs I did was, was with PowerPoint. And it was, not for, it was not for anybody. It was just for me, just playing around with it. And I remember it was my dad's laptop I was using because I didn't even have a laptop. So whenever I came back from work, I would take his laptop and just do some things in PowerPoint. But from there, I kind of transitioned to using Corel Draw. From there, started using... Um, Photoshop, and I think that was all I knew how to use at that point, just <coughs> Corel Draw, PowerPoint, and Photoshop. And um, I didn't I didn't have any clients, but I just kept on doing work um, because I was so interested in this ability to manipulate things with the computer, change people's clothes, change the color of people's hair, change the color of a car. And that's what I would do. Like, I could sit in a day and change the color of, like, 15 cars, and I would go to bed. You know, that, that was what graphic design was for me, just being able to manipulate and alter what I saw as reality. So it kind of gave this kind this God this God factor of oh you can play God on 
on the on the laptop, you know, put people together that were not really there, change the background, you understand? I could I could leave Nigeria without leaving Nigeria on the system, you understand? Just by cutting myself out and putting myself in the background of France. You understand? So yeah. all those things are very interesting to me. I didn't know they could be done, you understand? So I started doing it then and and that's that's how I got into graphic design. And um, after a while, I started channeling it as a business where I was doing it as something I was being paid for. And um, like every other person, most people, I started out not having too many clients. And when I had clients, they were not paying me enough. Um, some of them were paying, some of them were, were promised to pay but never paid. Some promised to pay but paid very little. Some promised to pay but paid only the upfront and didn't pay the balance. So I went through all those things. Um, but for me, it was it was because I really wanted to design. I didn't really care. I really didn't care about um, being paid that much. I just wanted to prove to myself that I could design, and that's because I had some people that I was following on the internet. Um, one company was a company called Too Advanced, and very true to their name, a lot of what they were doing was Too Advanced. And even till today, I don't see any company doing what Too Advanced used to do. Seventeen. 16 years ago, you understand? Hmm. They were really too advanced, but they used to do a lot of motion, um, graphics and stuff. Yeah. I know they set the bar for me. And because they set the bar for me, they really pushed me to push my work to a place where it became really good. Not hmm. by world standard, but by Nigerian standard. Oh, yeah. And you know, that, and that's why they, they, they kind of tell you, shoot for the stars and you might end up with the moon. You understand? So I think I ended up with the moon, just trying to be like too advanced. And even today, I'm not still like too advanced, but it kind of made, set me apart from people that were looking at people in Nigeria and saying I wanted to be like um, this company in Nigeria. But I was looking at a company that was even reckoned with in the, in the US. And by doing that, I started getting some clients. I started getting some traction. And I remember when I started working then, I was working with a lot of people in the music industry. And because people wanted to do album covers, posters and stuff, so I was doing a lot of album covers and posters, photo manipulation, you know. You know, then yeah. artists did not have money. So they used to say, okay, <laughs> exactly. I photo. Can, you put, can you put a diamond ring on my neck? Can you put diamonds in my gold in my teeth? Can exactly, you because... Can you mostly because background in the studio? Yes, I'm mostly because of the fact that I have also, I'm also a music artist. For those who don't know, I'm also a music artist. And one of the things that actually propelled me I actually fueled my interest in graphic design also because I was a music artist. At some point, I was creating my own music art covers. So right from that point, I started creating art covers for other music artists too. And that was how I started yeah. developing yeah. myself. Yeah, exactly. Sir. Yeah, the need, is, the, the need is strong within the music community because they need graphics to put their stuff out there. Yes. And um, this was many years ago. So I got quite a number of music artists really employing me to do work. And but I, I wasn't, but to be honest, I wasn't enjoying doing work. I really wasn't enjoying working for music artists, to be honest. One of the reasons, and I'm very honest with you guys, was because whenever then, not only was I doing their design, but I was also doing some of their photography. And whenever we went to go and take photographs, I didn't like the environment. You know, you just go there and this person is smoking weed. They're all smoking weed in the room. The whole thing. I'm yeah. like, I, I didn't want to be in a, I didn't want to be in an environment of people that were abusing substance. Or they will come with scantily dressed ladies. And I was like, this is not what I want. This is not the kind of design I want to be doing. I didn't want to be in that environment with these people. You understand? So I, 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 I kind of, I was uncomfortable, but I, I now started researching other types of design. And I, I kind of found out about logo design. But I'd known about logo design, but it was at the back of my mind. It wasn't at the fore. Because remember, I was following Too Advanced, and Too Advanced were not doing identity design. But I kind of read, read about a guy called Paul Rand. And um, he had died by the time I found out about him. But I realized that I had been seeing a lot of his designs around. And I'm like, this guy is dead. And his designs are still alive. And people are still talking about him. And I, 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 I read a lot of stuff about him, a lot of interviews from CEOs that said they had worked with him and stuff like that. And I was like, that's the kind of designer I want to be. I want to be the guy that works with CEOs, not the one that works with music artists. You understand? And I said, OK, if that's what it takes, I will go into logo design because I want to do stuff that has longevity and stuff that is respected. So I started doing logo design and um, I committed myself. I, I, I enjoyed it. I, I, I applied myself to it. And I started, I kind of just created a niche for myself. And I realized I started working with kind of clients I wanted to be working with. I started working with more corporate clients, 
owners of businesses. I started understanding more about business just from doing logo design for businesses. I started understanding about the thing called branding. And, you know, and, and that's how the journey just spiraled out. And I started getting into, more into branding than just into producing graphics. And um, I think about three or four years ago, um, I was talking to my wife and we just had this discussion. She was like, what else do you want to do about, apart from just design logos? And because at that time, I just finished doing something called Logo Match with my friend, Yinka. Um, I said, I want to be, I want to help designers on their journey. I want to create content for designers. And she told me then to create a YouTube channel, which I was very reluctant to because I was shy of the camera. I didn't want to be filming and said, but after a while, I kind of warmed up to it. And I did the first video on my YouTube channel called Pro Masterclass. And I got quite a good, I got good feedback. People kept on writing me, oh, this your video helped me. Oh, this was good. And that kind of inspired me to continue producing video content. And uh, I'll say this year, I think I've created yeah. up to um, over 100 content on uh, Pro Masterclass. Wow. And that's how I got into producing content and I got into mentoring. And, and, and that's where I am right now. I'm, I'm more inspired by teaching and mentoring and advising business people. But at the very core, I'm still very much a designer. Hmm. All right. Thank you very much for sharing that. You see, one of the things that I have learned from people like you and people like Chris Doe and other amazing, other great minds out there is that, and I also use that as a reference to say this to other designers, that when you spend the amount of time required to develop yourself and master your craft, it will, it will reflect in your work and the kind of argument you make about design. So, one of the questions that, that people ask the most in, uh, what's it called, in why, why registering for this class even though I feel like I feel like we have somehow touched on it during this first few minutes that we are talking about your journey, but I would like you to expand more on this, which is how do you stay on top of your game as a designer? What are those practices that you keep intentionally to stay relevant as a designer? Yes, sir. Okay, that's a good question. Um, how do how do you stay relevant as a designer? Um, well, to be very honest with you. This is my thoughts. So it's not something I read in a book. So you might, might, might be stuff that you might say, oh, I do agree with this, and that's very, very um, allowed. But um, I will tell you, for me, staying relevant as a designer um, involves being true to yourself. And, and, and I realize that's one of the hardest things people deal with in life generally, just being true to yourself and just saying, this is what I like as a person, Sandy. This is what I like, miracle. This is what I like, Dami. This is this is what Dami likes. This is mm. what I enjoy doing. You see, I, I, and that's one thing about me um, that I've been very grateful to God for. I've, I've I've learned the art of being true to myself and doing what I believe is right, irrespective of what the crowd thinks. I I, I, I do what I enjoy, and I enjoy what I do. And once I stop enjoying it, I stop doing it. So uh, for me, when I started out, I, you know, I studied architecture. And I realized, that I, I realized I wasn't enjoying it. You see, a lot of people cannot quit when they leave university after investing five, six, seven years in a course. They kind of feel, oh, man, I've, I have invested seven years learning medicine. And now... Can I just drop it to become a fashion designer? That would be a waste of seven years. That's how they think. So they feel they are indebted to themselves because they've invested so much time to continue down a line that they don't believe in. Mm. The same thing people take into relationships too. They're like, this relationship I'm with, in, in, with this person, I'm not really, I'm not, I'm not enjoying it. It's, it's, it's borderline abusive. We are not enjoying our communication. But they just feel, oh, we've been together for the past seven years, so we should, should keep pushing it. Hmm, more like, more like a sunk cost bias. Yes, you understand. So, 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 so they're not like we've invested so much time. Yeah, just got to keep going, and and that's how people lose, ne are never impactful. So, so hmm. for me, I was honest with myself. When I started out, I was doing web design, and I was getting people calling me. I, when I started getting clients calling me for web, I I now realized I wasn't enjoying it anymore. And I stopped. I stopped doing web in a day. 
in a day, I just talk, I just said, I'm not doing this thing anymore. People will call him and say, ah, no, I don't do web design anymore. I can refer to No, I don't do. People are like, ah, but you just did for this person. You did it very good. And I was doing it well. Then I started doing motion. And I was, to be honest with you, when I was in school in Canada, I was the best person in motion in my class. I was the best. Everybody in my class thought that's what Tola will do for his career. He will be a motion graphic designer. Because my motion was by far better than every other person in class. That by people that I went to school with in Canada, when they see me, they're like, I never thought you would do logos. I thought you would do motion. But once I came out, I said, I wasn't enjoying it. So it wasn't about the years I invested doing those. I didn't enjoy it anymore. I stopped. I went to the next thing. I see, for me right now, I, I've been doing logos for a while. And I had to be honest with myself when logos became less fulfilling. Like, I don't really enjoy doing logos, the art of doing logos myself anymore. I like directing, I like coordinating, I like looking at it and improving people's logos, but not me saying I want to be doing it anymore. And I had the audacity to stop. That way, when you look at my Instagram page, you don't see me post logos anymore. Mm -hmm. see, so when, when you don't constrain yourself to what you feel people expect or constrain yourself to what you feel you've committed time to and you're true to what your, your, your essence is telling you you should move on to, Mm. You always be in a place of relevance. You understand because you are always being true to yourself, and the way your your spirit rewards you for being true to yourself is by giving you success in what you do. But the way your spirit punishes you for for not being true is by making you struggle at it. Mm. So I would say, if you want to stay relevant, you must be true to yourself. Ask yourself, do I want to be doing this thing? Do I want to remain a friend with this person? Mm. Do I want to keep doing this thing as a career? And your your audacity to say no. I, I don't mind starting from the beginning. Like for me, not doing logos as much and starting from the beginning as a thought leader that nobody knew as a thought leader was for me humbling. You know, I had almost reached the height of my career as a designer and I went back to primary one again to start in something that I was totally new at. Mm -hmm. And I don't mind going back to primary one. So you must be ready to go back to not just primary one, but must be one at every stage that you feel you want to start something new. And that's how you stay relevant. Wow, that's highly profound and really, really speaking to me in a lot of ways. What you said, what, what you just said, sir, really, really speaking to me in a lot, in a lot of ways. And you know, I, will, I, I myself, I will, I will listen to this part over and over again to pick out the juice. So moving on, sir. So some, a couple of other people ask similar questions that goes in a way that I have kind of reconstructed it. That says that sometimes designers fi find themselves in a situation whereby they take up a project or sometimes a job that ends up demanding more from them in terms of let's say like deliverables or sometimes doing the doing things that you probably never envisage that you'll be doing on a project to the extent that it begins to affect them mentally physically you know it, it begins to affect their health basically so the question now is for a designer that finds his or herself in such a situation, how would you say that they should deal with it? And secondly, for someone who has not been in such a situation, what are the things that they need to do to make sure that, that they do not get such an experience? Yeah, exactly. All right, that's a good question. Um, first of all, I, I'll start by saying there is nothing, absolutely nothing, worth risking your health for nothing there is no relationship there is no job so important no client worth risking your health for so and and and, and it's interesting you say this because i talk with designers and business people a lot some people and people always talk about how to take their health for granted in fact they just they, they say it and that's not the core of the conversation and a lot of time when they send me messages and, and they just say you know what i see it's even affecting my health and begin to have high blood pressure and begin not to sleep at night and begin to have headaches and they just say it like that's by the way but that's not the point i'm going on you know, my point is still i don't know how to do this logo i'm like no no the logo is not as important as the headache and the high blood pressure you're having hmm. and the insomnia you're having i think that's that's very secondary the first thing we should talk about is why your health is being affected by your health is one of the most important things you should guard because once you lose it there's nothing you can do it connects you to this world once you lose it there's nothing nothing is more important than your health nothing so if anything starts in affecting your health you got to think think of how to start cutting those things out and questioning whether you really need those things never abuse your health never it's, it's a privilege your health is a privilege that you have it's a gift it's a gift 
So don't never take it for granted. Never ever take it for granted. Well, for the people that, and I understand when people say when you get involved in a project and it just spirals out of control, um, and that has happened to me many times when I started out. Um, and design projects have that tendency to spiral out of control, especially when you are starting out. Um, but we need to draw a line. There's a difference between your your work spiraling out of control in terms of you just keep working on this job and the client keeps asking for more. And before you know it, you don't even know how you got to this place where your deliverables have gone beyond logo and business card that you started branding the whole company, you've done their brochure, you've done their this, you've done everything, and then you don't even know how to exit. And you're not even getting paid for some of these things anymore. That is you being exploited by your client. You are being exploited. And that's why it's important for every designer to know the scope of the work you are go going into and to be able to... And your, and your scope has to be clear. And that's why when, you, when I believe you have a red card, it should it should detail everything you want to do. So when people send me their red cards as to look through, I'm always like, how detailed is your red card or how ambiguous are the things you're saying? So some people put their red card, logo design. Then they will put office collateral design. Then they will put social media design. And I'm like, do you know you could do office collateral design for three years and it will never end? Where you mm. can be designing different things. The coffee. So you have to see what the office collateral is. Is it business card letterhead and envelope? Mm. Is it business card and ID card? It, it would be very specific. Very specific. As a matter of a specific to the point where you say business card, you say business card template. It doesn't mean they can be sending you names. If you say what you're saying the template, if they send you names, you charge them for sending you names. You understand? Mm. We have to say business card. That means that they can send you 50 names. And, and some people just keep sending. And that happened to me too. Where I design for a company and they say, Oh, and I'll do business card design for you. And a year later, the person will come and say, Okay, we have um, 20 more staff now. These are their names. Put them in business card. Do you understand? And they don't even ask for how much you're charging because they, that's what you, you said you would do for us. So you must tell them templates. Or you must tell them business card design for two staff to start with. Addition to that will cost this per this. Do you understand? Or even say, You don't do addition to this. So the only way you add to this is if you are put on a retainer. You understand? They have to look for mm. someone to be editing the stuff for you. Or they'll keep on coming and say, oh, we change our address. Oh, we change this. Oh, we change that. Then you realize that you become a staff. You understand? So you must be clear in what you're delivering. Very clear. Social media design, too ambiguous. You must tell them, social media template. I'll give you two templates. After it, that's all. Even when you're being clear, even when you're being clear, some people will still try to take advantage and still come later on. Like, so, like just yesterday, someone still called me and still asked me. To, I I done um, like branding for them. I think about two years ago, and um, they came back and they said, "Oh, we had this little stuff from uh, um, uh, um, one of the things you did for us, and we need to change it. Can we just send you the design and just help us change it? Just change a line." And I was like, and I, I knew where it was going. But when, but when it was sent to me and I looked at it, I said, "Oh, okay, no, this is not this is not change a line." These guys want to change the design, you understand? So, so you know, you need to be very, I tell them, no, if I'm changing this thing, it's going to cost you this much. And you need to be able to speak up to clients and say, oh, when they say, okay, um, um, when you say, I'm going to design business card letterhead and this, and someone will just say, okay, can we send you um, our brochure to do it? I say, no, that doesn't cover what we do. If I'm going to do a brochure, it's going to be a different design. Hmm. I'm going to charge you separately for this. So you need people that get under this bus of overworking, are people that find it hard to speak. And you must find it hard to speak and just say, this doesn't cover what you said we're going to do. We don't, we've don't. we ended the project. We've closed the project. Any other thing you do, we'll charge you separately for it. You understand? So people will just say, oh, just add this photo. Once you add that photo for them, they're going to come back again and ask for you to yeah. add something. And add something. And that's when these things spiral out. But, but, but you know, that's it. We have to define between being exploited and adding extra value. So it's a very, very blurry line where I, I, I truly believe when you're working with a client, you should always give them more than you're being paid for. That's how, that, that, that's how you endear clients. So, so what I mean to say is that some, some designers also are too rigid, where they're like, oh, what we said we're going, we're going to do this, do this, do this, full stop. And I kind of think of it in this way. I, for many people that have cars, if you have cars, I'm sure people that have cars, imagine you have a car. And you go to go, you go to a mechanic to fix your or for servicing, 
service your car, change your plug, change your oil. And after you do that, they decide to wash your car for you. You feel good because you didn't pay for them to wash your car. But you just mm -hmm. thought, ah, you came here, the car is dirty, you service it, let's wash it. I always like mechanics that wash cars. After, I, I've had a couple of mechanics. But when they take my car away, the one that comes back with my car washed, I go back to. The one that just come back, the same mod that you took the car with, they will come back with it and add their own mod to it. No matter how good their work is, you don't want to go back to them. So, you, you know, so so no. you cannot, but, 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 but you, it, extra value has to be at your discretion. So I don't say, okay, I've done this logo for them. Let me do a card template for them. Let me do a business card template for them. You understand? And they just ask, oh, you like, and clients might add, will, will tell you, oh, you did this thing for us. And just said, oh, yeah, we did it for you. Or you can even say it. We've done your logo for you. Here's your logo. We also decided to throw in a template for your business card and your letterhead just in case you want to use it. That is at your discretion. You are controlling things. You understand? So so there's a difference between adding extra value and being taken advantage of. But if you are being taken advantage of, it's important that you are able to speak up immediately. Tell them, no, you can't do more than this right now. Any other thing you bring, you will be charged. And you must always also be clear about your deliverables from the onset. Hmm. Ah, thank you very much. That's, that was so highly in insightful. That was highly insightful. Now, there's another question here. It says that how can a designer who is a beginner collaborate with professionals? Because for a very long time, we have always been encouraging designers to collaborate, to collaborate, to collaborate. To collaborate. But I think the beginners, they are finding it hard to collaborate with the professionals. So how, how would you say, what advice can you give to newbies or someone who just started graphic design in order for them to collaborate with professionals, maybe, maybe to boost their their expertise to boost their skills or to basically to benefit from it and for them themselves to grow how can that bridge be gap how can they achieve such relationship whereby they can they will be able to work with professionals okay um i i, I think at this stage we need to know that as a beginner it's very hard for you to collaborate, if you're using that word collaborate with an experienced person. You know, the essence of collaboration is working with somebody that can do something you can't do, and you can do something they can do. So when you're a beginner, it's hard for you to collaborate with a professional that can do everything you can do. You understand? So as a beginner, you got to take that word collaboration out of your mind when you're working with an experienced person. You can't collaborate in that sense. The best you can do is be mentored or to work with them, you understand, or work for them, you understand, but collaborate with them, you can't collaborate. It's just like saying, um, me now, my, with my zero level of playing foot, football, I want to collaborate with Cristiano Ronaldo. What am I, what am I collab? I'll frustrate his game now. What am I collaborating <laughs> with him? You understand? The best I can do is watch him, Yeah. ask him to kind of say, if you can twice a year, just four times a year, just spare me five minutes of your time. You understand? And just teach me one or two tricks. If you can, you understand? That's how I can learn. Because the, 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 the gap, the technical knowledge gap is so much between me and Cristiano Ronaldo. You understand? It should be an insult for me. I'll say I want to collaborate with him. What am I collaborating? He can only teach me. He can only teach me. You understand? So, so, so you know, if you're a beginner, what you're looking for is mentor, mentoring not collaboration. What you're looking for is mentoring. That's the most important thing for you as a beginner is to get mentored, get taught. It's for you to sit down and watch a professional work. You understand? And watch them work. Watch them work. Offer to do some stuff, some work for them. That, that's the level of collaboration you can do for someone that is better than you. So, 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 um, what I'll tell beginners is look for mentors, don't look for collaborations. Then, when you get to that level of being good, you begin to collaborate. And the, the truth is, you can collaborate with your mentors or people you see as your idols or whatever it is you want to put it. Look, I'll give you, a, I, I'll give you an example. Um, you see, I, I, I run a company now with my business partner, Jinka Adishason, and he, um, we run a company called TA Consulting. Um, I've been designing longer than Yinka. And if, if you ask Yinka, how did I meet Yinka? 
I met Inka. He reached out to me and said, I want you to mentor me. I want I want to do a, like an understudy of you. You understand? I want to be your understudy. And, you know, I met up with him. And he came and said, I want to if you have projects. Um, so I had an office then. And I told him, okay, you can be coming over to the office. I need to come to the office every single day. And just ask, what do I have for him to do? And I'll say, okay, let's, let's do this. And I'll give him stuff to do. I'll work on the stuff. I'll say, oh, do this, do this, do this. And, you know, we started talking. And started getting better at what he was doing. He started getting very good. And I said, I was good at web. So I was, when I was doing logos, I was like, okay, can you handle the website for this? Because I don't like doing web. And he'll say, yes. And I'll give him the website to do. And he'll do the website and deliver. And you know what? Before long, he became less of a mentee and more of a work colleague. And to the extent where he became so good and that we had to reach out and say, can we partner? Can we work together? Can we begin to now collaborate? Do you understand? So mm. it comes from a place of humbling yourself first and saying, I'm not out to go and collaborate first with a professional. I'm out to learn from him. And when you learn from the person, you start to put investing in the time. Before you know it, there will be some areas that you become better than that professional. Just like there's some areas where Yinka became better than me. And there are areas where he's much better than me now. So I need him and he needs me. You understand what I'm saying? But remember, mm. we didn't start out at the same time. I started out much earlier, much better than he was. But it didn't stay that way. Do you understand? So uh, as a beginner, it's humility that is needed first. Offer yourself, offer your service. Reach out to your mentor and you say, can I, can I work with you? There's another guy who is in my mentoring program now. I keep talking about him. His name is Steven. Just offer to work. Just offered in 2020 during the when COVID started. Just said, I want to work with you. I'm like, oh, okay, man. I'm not looking at. Okay. But then I was looking at hiring people for internship, and I said only people in Abuja. And he had the audacity to say, look, I'm not in Abuja, but I want to work with you, whatever it takes. And I said, didn't you read this stuff? He said only for people in Abuja, and he said he wants to put himself there. I know just that audacity alone just made me feel okay. I want to go for this guy. That can disregard this 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 rule that I put there only in Abuja. I know he worked 2020, he worked with me, he did the odd jobs. After doing logo, I'll give him go and do the business card and letter. Mm -hmm. We are go and do this, go and prepare the brand guide. Go and... But before you know, before I knew it, he started becoming good at doing logos just by looking at the way I was working. And I just realized this guy is good at doing and before I knew, a job just came. I just said, you know what, this job is your job, you go and do it. And he did it, and the client did not even know that I didn't touch the project. That's when I knew that he was good enough. You understand? And now, he's running his own company. He's working with his own client. And so, if I want to work with him, I say, do you have the chance to work with me on this project? You understand? Mm. Now we can collaborate. But he first humbled himself and said, I want to work and learn and watch. Which is what a lot of beginners don't want to do now. They don't want to sit down on the sidelines, on the bench, and just watch. You mm. understand? Yeah, watching is very important. Watching is very important. That's why that's how you get better. So I say, don't look at collaborating first. Look at learning and being mentored first. Hmm, that is another that is another insightful one. Thank you very much, sir. So uh, before we we move forward, one of the other questions that I would like us to ask is um, coming. What is the difference between being a graphic designer? and being in the graphic design business because you explained to us how you transitioned from being a freelancer to starting your own design um what's it called design um agency and even before before being a freelancer you have also been an employee and all of that so what in your experience yeah. what would you say that is the difference between being a graphic designer and being in the business of graphic design yeah, that's a good question. Um, the biggest difference is the ability to handle people. Being a graphic designer, the only thing that is needed is your ability to use the tools. The ability to handle Photoshop, Illustrator, uh, Corel Draw, or whatever your poison is. It might be Figma or whatever it is out there right now. But being in the business is about handling Photoshop, Corel Draw, People Shop, People Draw. You understand all those things yeah. handle people very important being able to handle money very important it's being able to handle your own self-esteem and confidence very important so there are a lot of things that come to to play when you are working as a 
person in the business of design than just working as a person doing design. You see, when, when I was working, um, because I'd, I've worked as a designer in different places. When I was in Canada, I worked as a designer. When I worked as a designer, I didn't know who the clients was. I never met the clients. All I knew was I had a boss who told me, Tola, do this, deliver this, does, do this by four o'clock. If I could do it, I would go home. How the boss sells it, I don't know. How much they make, I don't know. They just pay me at the end of the, the end of the week. You understand? Pay mm -hmm. me at the end of the week. You understand? It, it wasn't about talking. I, I wasn't negotiating price. You understand? So I was a graphic designer. I wasn't. I wasn't in the business. But you see, when I started doing it as a business, I now had to now know how to work with people. You understand? How to charge? How to ask for my balance? How to say no to unlimited revisions? You understand? How to maintain relationships with clients even when we are not working? You understand? How to, how do I keep in communication with clients even when we are not working? Um, how to be charming? How to be charming in a way whereby they see you and they, and they want to work with you after talking with you? How to listen to people and to listen to their body language, not just what they are saying. So when someone is saying, mm, I don't really mind about the color, and you look at how they are talking, and like, this person not being honest. They care too much about the color. You understand? So, so you know, how to read people psychologically? So people. The, the handling of people is the difference is the biggest difference between being a technical worker and being a business owner handling people hmm. thank you very much for that that was that was highly insightful as as um as others uh, so what another question here is um what's like like you have said also like in your in your experience you have also said that you have done this you have done that and then at some point you have fitly been a logo designer and for a very long time i myself have gotten different form of arguments about which uh, about if designers should be generalists or if you should be um, a specialist I, i'm also of um, of a of the school of thought that at some point you can be a generalist and at some point you can be a specialist. So I just want to know, sir, what is your take on being a generalist and being a specialist? And if one is to be a generalist, at one point should they be a generalist? And if they want to be a specialist, at one point should they be a specialist? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, yeah. yeah. I think this is the question I've answered a lot. Um, and and it keeps on coming up. I don't know why this question. I, if they've asked, if, they, if someone ever asks me, what do you think are the most important questions designers want to have answered? I will never have thought these questions. It, it, I'm talking about maybe about five years ago when people started asking me questions. Yeah. I never thought this question was such an important question. But obviously, know, right? it's an important question. There, there has hardly been a Q and A that I've done that this question has not come up. Yeah. There's, there's another question now that that you've not asked. And I'm going to, I'm just keeping my fingers crossed that this might be the first Q&A that, that that question will not be asked. So I'm not keeping okay. my fingers crossed, but this one, so now that, that this one is asked, I'm going to check. For the I mean, one. But I, what's it called? I also, tried, I also tried as much as possible to make sure that some of, most of those questions that I'm going to ask will not be questions that you might you have answered also. But this particular one, a, lot, <laughs> a, a bunch of people kind of ask questions yeah, that just yeah, was the very, angle. It, it, so I, yeah, I, I yeah, have yeah, to bring yeah, them together. A, yeah, yeah, it's a very, it's a very, even when you watch a lot of them ask, if, if you're having an interview or a session with either Bolanle or let's even say you're having a, a, a session with Chris Drew self, that this question still comes out, generalize or specialize. Yeah. Um, so, so obviously it's, it's a point of confusion for people. Um, and, and I can understand because, and I'll tell you why I understand why people are asking this question, because people don't want to feel like they're missing out. People don't want to feel like if, I can do this. Why will I miss making money from this? And that's why this question is so important for people because they feel if I should pitch my tent with this, that means I'm missing out on all the other things I could do. And that comes from a survival mentality, and which is the first thing we need to get rid of. Because we, because here in Africa, we have this survival mentality. And survival is eat anything that comes to you. So it's almost like what's in the jungle. You see, on a good day, there are some animals that a lion should not bother trying to eat. Like a lion eating a rat. 
<laughs> you cannot rely on enough energy, enough calories. You rely on a good day to pass off a rat. I'm telling yeah, you, yeah, yeah, should pass off a rat, and, and, and that's why you will see that sometimes if you look at pictures of stuff in the jungle, you will see a bird on 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 a lion's head, on mm. the lion's nose, and lion will not eat it because it's not worth it. You understand? It's not worth it. But you see, when when the jungle is hard and there has been no food for long, a lion will kill a baby rat. You understand what I'm saying? Which means yes, a waste of energy. So, so, so you see, w- w- when business has become a jungle, people don't want to miss out on any work. Any work is work as long as they pay money. How about they asking generalized or specialized? But this, this is how I will put it. Generalized, specialized, generalized. The first, let me just say fear, because fear is ambiguous. So I want to give you a timeline. The first one, first year to your third year, generalized. Do any work and every job that interests you. Go into learn any any part of design that interests you. If you want to learn motion, learn motion. If you want to learn identity, learn identity. Generalize. You understand? And test out stuff. You are generalizing because you know which we want to know which areas you like the most, which one fits your personality and your skill set the most. So generalize. When you've gotten to your fourth year, you should be able to make a decision. This is what I want to be known for. This is what I want. This is where I want to pitch my tent. When they say web, they will mention my name. When they say motion, they will say ah, Oluyemi is the guy to go for this one. You understand? So that's when you specialize. And when you, the truth is that when you specialize, you will not lose money because then you, you put yourself out as an expert. And what it means to be an expert is that you can charge more for doing this thing. So you charge a premium. And that's why mm. you're specializing. You're specializing because you want to start charging a premium for doing stuff. When I started specializing in doing logo design, I started charging a premium. And when I used to tell clients my price, they say, oh, okay, okay, and because it's you now, because it's you, because it's your thing. You understand what I'm saying? Because they knew that this is what this guy, this is what this guy is known for. You understand? So I would say specialize within your fourth year and let me say your eighth year. So that's like another four. So look at it in four year gaps, four years, four year um, sessions. So first four years, um, generalize. When you enter or end your last four years, specialize. When you've got into your eighth year, as you're living your eighth year, think of how to start generalizing again. And what I mean is, in your eighth year, you want to stop being the one doing the grunt work. If you are eight years deep into something, and they are bringing work to you, and you are still the one putting on your laptop to do it. There's something going wrong with your career. Hmm. And I did it, and I can tell you very authoritatively. I spent too long in my career doing the grunt work, and I'm, I don't regret things. But for me, if I could change something, that's, that's, that's the thing I would change about my career path. I spent too long doing the work myself, and that came from a point of insecurity and greed on my side, because I wanted to make all the money. And I and I didn't trust people to do work as good as mine. Do you understand? So I always felt if it doesn't touch my hand, it won't be good. And that brought a lot of stress because I had to be working on all the projects. I won't sleep. I, and my lifestyle has changed. I'd gotten married. I had kids. I'm like, ah, I wasn't spending time. I was like, so what does it worth it? It wasn't worth it. I had to start trusting people and giving them opportunities to work. And and I was surprised. They were almost even better than me, or even better than me. Do you understand? So then. I, and I realized that it wasn't, I'd gotten past, far past that eighth year and I was still working on my own. And I don't advise anybody to do that. In your eighth year, you should have at least one person learning under you, working. You are just directing. You are directing them. And by the time that person, if they are faithful mm-hmm. enough to stay with you for oh, eight years, too, you, probably, you tell them to stop working so and I'm start directing right. somebody else, too. You understand? Because your eighth year, stop working. I won't advise you to stop working before your eight years old. Because you also want to build your skill so that when the person you hire says, I'm not coming to work, they can't say I'm not coming to work because they know Oga can do that work too. The fact that he's giving you the work to do is, is him giving you an honor. So when they realize that you can do it, when they realize that you can't do it, they'll take you for granted. That's why you want to spend eight years working. But after the eight years, you don't want to be working anymore. You want to be mentoring people. Then you want to start generalizing in your interest and relationships. So what I mean by generalizing then is that you don't want to be talking only design. 
you want to start learning about medicine, start learning about entertainment, start learning about fashion, start learning about, you start having different conversations because you're going to start meeting people because you're now the owner of the company. So when you start meeting with another owner of the company that runs a food, that is in the food industry, you should be able to talk with them about food and what's happening in the food industry. When I'm not talking to someone that is in the entertainment industry, you should talk with them about entertainment. When I'm talking to someone in politics, you should talk with them. So you must generalize in your knowledge. You understand? Because that's when they can now say, take the work to Tola's company. Because Tola knows about this thing. But if all you know is logo design and Photoshop and this, nobody will give you work at that stage. Hmm. Because they want someone that knows, that understands what it is to work in that industry. So you need to start generalizing <laughs> in your conversations and in your relationships. So you should not just know designers. When you look through your phone, you should know designers, architects, lawyers, doctors, you know, different people in different industries because they're the ones that will call you for design work. So that's my answer to generalization <laughs> or specialization. Generalize, specialize, and generalize again at a four-year session every four years. Hmm. Thank you very much for, for breaking that down because I know like that um, a lot of times you have talked about this and many people also have probably heard about this in so many different occasions. But I think you kind of did more justice to it with your breakdown. Thank you very much for that, sir. So this particular question, I think I suspect that is the question that you were that you were thinking that, that we are going to ask, uh, which is also a common question, which says what are the secrets to attracting well-paying well-paying clients? What are the yeah. secrets to attracting well-paying clients? I know that this question is yeah. quite that's uh, that, that, that the question actually to be honest with exactly. you. Exactly. So, I know I know it's a common question. So, <laughs> that's the question, yeah. Yeah, that's how do I get bigger clients? How yeah. do I get bigger playing clients? How do I yeah, yeah. So so now your your this session is now a normal session now. It's not, it's not, it's not normal. There's nothing, there's nothing special about it because you marked all the two boxes. Uh, but, I know, but, right? but, you know, you know, uh, it's, it's, it's all right. It's all right that people yeah. are asking that because it just shows that it is what, and I, and I still say it is based on that survival mentality. That's why these two questions keep coming up. It now yeah. comes to, I need to make money. I need to survive. And I can understand mm. that, especially in Nigeria. Um, but you know, I'll start out by saying this. I'll start out by saying this. And this might be the most important thing people might need to learn today. So if you're listening, listen to this. If you don't remember any other thing I've said, remember this. The first thing you learn, the first thing you should learn as a business, the first challenge you should surmount as a business is the fear of being broke. Once you can get over that, once you can get over, I am not scared to be broke. I am not scared to be hungry. I am not scared to have no clients. Ah, oh, man, your life will change. If you can get over that, just get over the fact that, okay, I go broke, go broke. If I die, I die. You understand? Mm. <laughs> you see how much clearer your thoughts will be, how much audacious you will be, and how you attract people more. I don't know why it works that way, but it works. Once you can say, I am not scared to be broke. The fear of being broke, once you can get over it, the world is your oyster. You'll make the best decisions. You make the, and you realize that you won't go broke. Hmm. But once you're scared of being broke and scared of not having clients, you'll go through spells of being broke and not having clients. So the first thing every business person should learn is I'm not scared of being. It's just, it's just like they're just like dogs. You see, mm. I have dogs. I like dogs, but you know dogs. Eh? Once you're not scared of them, they're scared of you. They work with an energy. Dogs work with an aura, and when they see a confident aura, they get confused. They're like, oh, okay, so what do I do here? Because dogs are always looking for a leader. So when they see an aura that is bold and brave, they subdue. When mm. If you cannot be scared of a dog and not give it eye contact and just be confident, and, unless the dog is a rabid dog, is a rabid dog, that means that the rabies has gotten to his brain, it will attack you. But mm. if it's a dog, a guard dog, it will subdue. It will not attack you because it's not, it's not sure. 
You understand the same thing with being broke. Once you you can look hunger in the face and say, hunger, I'm not scared of you. What's the worst you can do? Hunger will not, it will not become a servant to you. You understand? But because we take care of it and we pamper it and we put it in a special room and we feed it, whenever you don't give it food, it, 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 it treats you like a slave. So you see, this, this issue of how can I get bigger clients, eh? it's, it's entrapping a lot of us. Hmm. And then we're not doing the work that we love to do. We are working based on who is paying the highest money, not based on who do I want to work with? Will I enjoy doing this work? So they are afraid to tell clients no. It's not about who, how to get the biggest client. It's to get the clients that you enjoy working with. And you know what? I realized that the work that I enjoy doing the most are the works that have brought the most clients. So when I have a client and I'm I, at this point in my life, I don't work with clients that I don't, I don't, number one, if you give me, a, like someone approached me two weeks ago and told me, I want you to do branding for me. I am aspiring to be, um, I'm going to declare to be a presidential aspirant in 2023. I want you to do good money. I'm telling you, they're going to pay well. Hmm. I told them no. I said no. Hmm. You understand? I told I told them no. I, I spoke with Yinka. Um, you know, so we said no. We're not working. We're not interested. You know, we're not interested. Number one, it didn't sound interesting. Number two, it didn't sound like the person had any genuine, in, any genuine things that they wanted to do. You understand? Mm. Just said no. And then some people around were wondering, how could you say no to this kind of thing? Because we've gotten over. Look, when when Yinka and I started TA Consulting in 2020, we had one only one client in 12 months reach out to us 2020 was the hardest year of our company life as ta consulting but but you know what we didn't budge because we at the beginning we we're like we are ready to be broke oh. we are ready man that was me we're not going to work on projects we don't like you understand we're not going to work on projects we don't like if you go broke you go broke mm. you understand and 2020 tested us but 2021 yeah. was much better you understand because mm. then we started working with people and started having just interviews, just sessions, just brand sessions with people. And they paid. They paid good money. We, we didn't design Jacko, just mm. a matter of asking them, what are your values? Makes what sense. are your brand personality stuff? Yeah. And we gave them the results of what they want. We were ready to pay because of the confidence we had. Do you understand? Mm. So it's not about working with... I can tell you how to get big clients. Do you understand? I can tell you to put your work out there. Do you understand? Look at what they want get in the industry that they want, look at how they like their work presented. But you can work with big clients and you will be sad for the rest of your life. Hmm. They are paying you millions like this, but you are sad. That's deep. Number one, because you don't control your time. You don't control your sleep. You don't control how you eat. I've worked with a client like that before now. My biggest client, we parted ways in 2020. <laughs> and that's because they were making me miserable. Even as, ex as experienced as I am, they turned me into a loaf of bread because it was from their money that I was paying my children's school fees. It was from their money that I was paying for stuff in my house. It was from their money. So I now started seeing them as some kind of God that they cannot call you at any time. I say, Mr. Tola, please make sure you deliver this. Make sure you deliver this. And I thought, I'm not happy. Before I told them, look, I can't, I can't work with you guys. And we parted ways. And they went. And you know what happened? They got jobs came. Because I wasn't scared for them to go. And I just thought, why didn't I fire these people long ago? Why did I go through sleepless nights? Sometimes I'll talk with them and I'll be such an angry person and I'll come to the house and I'll be angry with my kids. I'll be, hey, go, 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 I don't talk to you. I'll be angry with my wife. I'll be snapping with her on top of a client. It wasn't worth it. They were paying me well, but I wasn't happy. And I didn't like the job they were doing. Sometimes I'll be working like this. My wife would be like, why are you so angry working? And I'll, because, and I'll tell her because I don't like the work I'm doing. And then I'll be like, but I have to do it because I have to pay the children's school fees. You understand? That was a mistake I was making. The client was dictating what I, I was working on, not me. But now I'm so happy because I don't work on stuff I don't want to work on. I work on only stuff I want to work on. But that's because I've been open to saying I'm ready to be broke. So, as a designer, if you are not married, you don't have kids, why are you so scared of being broke? 
of being hungry. So they just feel that it's hungry. People like me are the ones that should be scared because if I'm hungry, my children will be hungry. So how do I deal with children that are hungry? Hmm. But I realized that I'm ready to make that decision. And since I was ready to make that decision, I've never ever gone broke. Wow. Because I'm not scared of it anymore. You understand? So this question of how do I get bigger clients, forget about that. Start thinking over how do you get clients that get you to express how you want to express yourself as a designer. That gets you to work on projects that you really want to work on. And how mm. you do that is by is by being attracted to the project first instead of being attracted to the project. Mm. Be attracted to the project. Be attracted to the project. Don't say, oh man, this kind of projects I want to work on. Even though they're not paying so much, I want to do it. I want this kind of thing to be in my portfolio. A lot of designers don't even know the kind of work they want to be in their portfolio. So they're not working for every, every and anybody doing flyer work, social media. What mm. do you want to be in your portfolio? That is what controls the kind of clients you get in future. Mm. So I'll still go back to how we work in TA consulting. You kind of think, what do you want to be in our portfolio? Do we want political job, APC, PDP, APLA? Hmm. No. <clears throat> what we want is budding businesses from regular people that started and say we started from zero and now because we work with these guys, we are 10. You understand? Those are the kind of things that we want to see, those emotional projects. Not those, not those projects that are, that are deep wallets. And we realize that when we start doing the kind of work we want to do, because we want to do it, we do it with all our hearts, and they become very impactful. And that's when they transcend clients in Nigeria to clients abroad. So you need to start thinking of not clients that pay more, but clients that allow you to bring out the best in you, that work on your strength, that you can show the work and say, no, no, this work was not done by a Nigerian designer. This work was done by a global company. You understand because you enjoy doing it so that's my answer to this question forget about clients that you you come to clients that will pay you well and they will pay you well for doing what you love doing mm. when you keep working with people that make, that pay you well for stuff you don't love doing you, see, you what you get is more of people that come to you to do stuff you don't love doing and for you know you, you hate design you hate your life you hate the clients and mm. then you now say i don't like doing design anymore self i don't like it no you love doing design just that you're not working with the right people doing the right stuff Hmm. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for that, sir. That was highly insightful again. And already we are we are about nine minutes out of time. But I would like us to to I would like you to help us talk about this before we before we call it a close tonight. Which is how do a designer protect his or herself? Like like how, how can they protect their work legally? without having to involve a lawyer as an imagine as a boarding designer like someone that just started let's say like a freelancer for example that wants to work with a client how can they do some of this legal work and all of those things so that just just so that they and their work is protected because obviously they probably don't have the ability to hire a lawyer to do legal stuff for them yet what advice can you give to them in that regard sir Okay, I want to understand this question. Well, what are you protecting? Is it personal work you are doing or a job you are doing for a client? No, that, I think it's, it's, it's actually supposed to be a job for a client. I, I actually have an understanding okay. of where this is going. Like probably in my, in my opinion, if I was going to be the one to answer this question, I would just say that get your contracts and everything in place. But I would, I would just like to hear from you. I, would, I wouldn't want, to, want it to be from my own head. I would like it to, to hear from you like, what can you say to that? Because I know that a, a lot of people like, look, let's say for instance now, um, a, a designer that got into a project relationship with a client that started, mm -hmm. that started taking advantage of them. To me, I feel like if they have their contracts and everything in place, they probably wouldn't have um, such an issue. You know, so I feel okay, like... Take advantage of them in what way? Like, like, like probably not paying them early enough or or let, let, let's say, for instance, they are not paying um, up to the agreed amount because, for, I mean, for, for sometimes people would work with you and for some reason, I have personally have experienced this for way back where I'm going to work for clients and they would just be like, you know what, we can't pay that amount of money. This, uh, this, is, what you, this, this is what we want. We don't want this anymore and all of those kind of things. But since I, I've started implementing the what's it called inclusion of contracts and having mutual understanding with the client before yeah. before going forward things are kind of changed yeah. for me so i just want to like see okay. how which angle you are going to take that from 
Okay, all, all right. So I, I'll try to answer the question to the best of my understanding of the question. Although I'm still, I'm still very cloudy on some parts of the question, but I'll try to under, I'll try to under, uh, answer it from where I understand it from. Um, I think first of all, I think first of all, um, I don't know how to say this that people don't take it the wrong way. But I think, I think first of all, we are not as important as we make ourselves out to be. And I'm talking about also, generally, me included. Mm. Um, we, are, we are not as big as we think we, uh, we make ourselves out to be, in the sense that, um, you see, this contracting, so that they are not taking advantage of contracts, contracts are made to be broken. That's the truth. People break contracts like, like crazy, any everywhere in the world, no talkers of Nigeria. Contracts, mm. a lot of contracts are not worth the paper they are, they are written on. Contracts are made to be broken. If you watch football, those guys break contracts like crazy. And you just wonder why they keep signing contracts with them. Someone that will tell you, I will spend five years in your club. And they won't even spend a full season, and they, and they are gone. You understand? See, the contracts, are, and those are people that, that have lawyers, clubs that have lawyers, they still have one single footballer breaking contracts. Not talk about a graphic designer. If somebody mm. wanted to use your work, no matter what contract you sign with them, they will use it in front of you like this. They will use your work, <clears> not <throat> pay you, and they wouldn't see a day in court. You understand? They wouldn't mm. happen. You, you have no control over that. You might sign contracts for now, but number one, do you have deep enough pockets? Number two, do you have the time to litigate? Um, so. I wouldn't take it from the contract end. I wouldn't take it from because the contract end, you don't even have the most for the contract end. Mm. You can't hire a good enough lawyer. You understand? Exactly. And you don't want to go through court because court drags stuff out. And um, so, so, so I, I, I will go from, and, and this is where I was telling the difference between being a graphic designer and being a In the business. business person doing graphic design is people it's the people skill hmm. you must know how to work with people and appeal to their emotional side um when you can appeal to people you can get them to do what you want most of them at least 99.9 percent .9 of them the 0 0.1 are still there but 99.9 .9 percent of them you can get them to do what you want and you can sell through a project easily to an extent what I would say is the hardest place, the hardest thing is closing a project. Starting a project, you have so much control. And that's why I tell people, when you're going into a project, 70% upfront. I tell people 50%, but that's even too low right now. It's too much of a risk. 70% if you're just starting out. And so 70%, let's say you've been working for the first four years, or let me say first six years, before you even get to eight years. Eh? Taking 70%, not 50%. 50 nobody should tell you to take 50% anymore. It's too much of a gamble. It will pay you too much if you don't get the many 50%. Mm. So I would not advise anybody, anybody, beginner, intermediate, to take 50%. Ask for 70%. The person wants to do business with you. <laughs> but it gets to a point where you are experienced enough to confidently charge 100% upfront. Mm. And every business should come to that level. It is not you asking for too much. It is you just asking for what is due you as somebody that has been working for that long. 80%. It gets to a point where you even show your portfolio and say, I've worked with this, 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 this client and I've delivered for them. If that doesn't convince you to pay 100%, then I can't work with you. You ask for 100%, not because you feel you are a taller labi. No, because... You feel like you have paid the dues. You work for eight years. You work with people, and you can deliver the job. Do you understand? A hundred percent upfront. It is mm. not a favor that the client is doing you by paying hundred percent. It is a right that you have from being invested in the business for so long. I used to feel, oh man, every 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 client must secure themselves. Oh, let them pay seventy percent first. It's, it's it's just fair. It's not fair. At the point, I just tell people, you pay hundred percent or go. You pay 100% or go. I, I didn't put 18 years into this business for you, for me to continue to sell yourself to business. You know, 100%. So 
So you go into it. So I'll start from 70% upfront if you're just starting out. You're not confident enough. Don't even do 50%. Start 70%. When you go into it with 70%, with 70% mindset, if they don't pay the remaining 30%, it will pay you, but it won't pay you as much. And remember, that 30% is the hardest thing to get out because you've shown your cards. Do you understand? That 30% is based on trust. And that's why you must know how to handle getting your 30%. You must know how to handle this. And it's not contracts that get it out. As a matter of hmm. fact, if you keep on saying, oh, this is our contract, is this, I will take you to court, the harder the client will become. They will now say, okay, you want to take me to court that day? Well, let's go to that court now. And you get that your 30%. Do you understand? People harden <coughs> when you go hard on them. People hmm. soften when you go human on them. Do you understand? And, and that's where, when you get that page of collection of 30%, your communication skills are very important. Your communication skills are mm. very important. You must, you, it is the way in which you put pressure on a person without putting obvious pressure. You understand? Without putting pressure on it, like you are a gangster trying to get money from, from a bookie. You understand? Mm. So, it's the way you put pressure. And it gets to a point where you just realize this person doesn't want to pay. They don't want to pay. They don't want to pay. It's obvious. There's nothing I can do. You must be able to call to your lawyer and say, okay, I accept the fact this person is not just a good human being. Do you understand? Mm. I'm going to move on to the next project. I think sometimes we pitch our tent too much on people that don't want to pay. Like if our life will end without them. You must be able to come to that reality that people that don't pay me cannot stop the progress of my life. Mm. I would leave them and move on. Do you understand? Yeah. I made that mistake too. And I made that mistake too. I, even recently, there's a guy. He owed me 500 k 500 k He has no pay. Till tomorrow, he has no pay. It, it's, it's like two years. And the mistake I made, I will, I've been, it's just this year that I stopped calling him. I called him for two years. Hmm. I'm like, Tola, why did you call this guy for two years? When you call this guy for six months, he did, if I, six months is too much, I called him for two weeks, he didn't pay. What makes you think you will pay hmm. after six months? That I even called him for two years. So, and I said, Tola, you need to free yourself. You've lost 500k. It's okay. Did you die? No. Did your family stop eating? No. But you know what? You pitch your tent two months on this guy that didn't pay. Do you hmm. understand? It's a loss. Let him go. It shows more about his character than it shows about my character. But you know what? Did it stop my life? No. It didn't stop my life. I made more than 500k in that two years. But a lot of time we go, we go back to that person and say, oh, this person hasn't paid me. Let him go. It happens in business. Hmm. There are some leaks that will happen. Those leaks, just let them go. Once you ask the person, two weeks, they haven't paid. Let it go. At most, one month. Don't go back to asking them any... Don't go back. Or else, you know what? The emotional torment will eat on you more. And then you don't even see what God is doing in your life anymore. That because you are so... Sh- focused on that balance 50k that the person has not paid you, that you don't realize that you've, you've, you've done over 250k jobs in that time. You understand? So, so I feel we need to be open to some leaks in business. Hmm. You to, if I ask anybody here, is there anybody here that has not been owed money by a client? Raise your hand. <laughs> Only someone that has not been in business for long enough will yeah. not will raise his hand. Yeah, I'm sure definitely. every single person here has somebody that is owing them money. Every single person here. Every single person. And I dare to say that I don't think anybody is being owed money as much as I am on this conversation. Hmm. And I am pretty much the most experienced person here. And yet people still owe me money. The only difference is I don't let it get to me anymore. I move on to the next person. I will make I'll try not to make the same mistake again. Or sometimes not even my mistake, just the fact that it happened. If I sued all these people. Number one, I want time to work on my business. Number two, I'll spend most of my money giving it to lawyers. Do you understand? Hmm. And sometimes the client might even win the case. Do you understand? Because they are better lawyers. So I just move on. So you need to be able to move on. And this is where it comes to that mentality of business is not, it's not about money. And that's, that might be a controversial thing for people to accept. But business is not about money. Business is not about money. <clears throat> Business is about expressing yourself and adding value. Because the truth is that when we all die, nobody's taking this money with them anywhere they go. This money, they're not taking it with you anywhere. 
the, the, the privilege that you have to do business that someone pays you is a privilege. That someone pays you is a privilege. It's a blessing. Do you understand? It's not about the money. Because the money would come one way or the other. That's the truth. If, you sat, if I sat down in my house now, right now, and all I did was advise designers when they call me, or they, I would still make money. Hmm. You see, the reality I've come to live with is it's not my business that sustains me. It is God that sustains me. And if hmm. God has to make someone just remember me, I just say, so I just remembered you, I just want to tell you 200K. That's how God will sustain me. You understand? So it's, business is not about money. Business is about adding value to life. It's about making somebody's life better. It's about improving somebody's skill. You understand? By by helping them to, to position their skills in such a way that they become more visible as designers. But really, it's not really about money. It's not about money. So you will have people that will owe you. Move on. Did you get to do a good job? Did you get to do a good job for them that you can show? That can bring attract other people that is enough payment do you understand because the truth is i've had when i started out the first big client i had paid me 900k to do a logo for a company the company <laughs> is defunct now but then it was i'll tell you what the company was, was, was dasat we did a logo for them hmm. they look for dasat that communication does dasat exist now no hmm. They paid me 900k. Good. Do I remember what I used that 900k for? To be honest with you, I can't. I, I, I can't. I can't point to something in my house now that I used that 900k for. I cannot remember what that 900k went into. Hmm. But that I worked on on that sad logo, I will never forget it. That I saw my logo on a billboard for the first time all around Abuja, I will never forget it. Do you hmm. understand? Nobody can take away yeah. that that thing that I worked on that sad logo. It's in history, in my history for life. Hmm. You understand? But then I understand, I cannot remember what I used it for. What I ate with it, I cannot remember. Where it went to, I can't remember. But you, but you know what? The value I got from working on it, the confidence it built in me that I can work with a company as big as Dark Communications, nobody can take that away from me. And that is the core of business. The fact that it shows you what you are capable of doing, who you are capable of meeting, lives you are capable of affecting, that is the real reward of business. Not the hmm. money they owe you. Or the money they don't owe you because you don't remember it in the first place you understand so mm -hmm. what i would just say is let's just relax you know going to business expecting that people will owe you money it will happen so just create a room for it some mm. people will pay you it will happen create a room for it some people will pay you more than you are charging some people will say oh man the fresh your work is so good i want to pay you an extra 100k make a room for it I, I've, I've recently i've recently gotten a client for the first time i recently got a client that sends me a gift after our project i was very very happy exactly <laughs> yeah exactly that's that's business you understand yeah. that's the beauty of business it is in it is, it is in all those ups and downs nobody's immune from them but just, but don't get too upset that someone's owing you 5k you don't yeah. start making that making you sad 5k you will make 5k again so i told you someone's owing me 500k Look, the time will come when someone will owe me five million. You understand? Will this end my life? No. I will move on to the next project. I will mm. move on. You understand? So learn to move on from all these disappointments. And you realize that business is an opportunity for you to express yourself. Wow. Thank you very much, sir. That was highly insightful. And we have even like our uh, what's it called? This session was supposed to end by 7 30 and we are already at 7 55 already. That was about 50 or uh, about 30 minutes extra and there really is a lot that i personally myself i have a lot of unlearning and we're learning to do after this session thank you very much sir i i really appreciate you personally for first of all honoring my invitation and coming here tonight to do this with us i will never take it for granted the community will not take it for granted we all appreciate you thank you very much we appreciate you for everything you are doing for the development and the growth of the nigerian and african um creative industry at large we really do appreciate you and your doings everything you do inspires people like us to also do better to also contribute to the growth and betterment of this industry sir so guys please let us please appreciate satola alabi let us appreciate satola alabi 
and what's it called? You might also need to appreciate him beyond just typing thank you, yell, right? You might also need to go to appreciate him beyond just typing thank you, yell. You understand? Thanks. So I don't know. I don't know if you have any public places where, where people can drop something for you whenever they feel like. I know there are some platforms like that that allows people like you to take appreciations from their audiences. You know, maybe if you have any no, no, source, no, no. you can let us know anytime. Any, whenever you have it, you can let us know. We will help you publicize it. However, everybody, please let us, uh, what's it called? I want to make it a mandate for everyone to please go and subscribe to his YouTube channel, Pro of Masterclass. There is a bunch of content that you guys are missing. Like highly valuable content there. Everything that he has spoken today, he has spoken more about all of these things on his, on his channel. So when you go to Pro of Masterclass, you will gain more what's it called more value you just connect with him on social media so aside from instagram which is i think please can, can you give us uh, all the other channels that people can reach you at from your socials to... um, well, well, yes sir uh, um well i'll just say um instagram ta underscore alabi and um my youtube channel pro masterclass i also have um for those people that might not find it comfortable to be listening to stuff on YouTube, I have a podcast where it's almost a repeat of what I have on my YouTube channel, which is also Pro Masterclass. Um, it's on Spotify and um, what's the, what's this, um, Anchor. So you can also so you can check out it on Google Pro Masterclass uh, um, podcast. So I, I, I think for me, that's the biggest um, way people can give back to me by consuming the content I put out there. I think that's the most encouraging thing. So if you can listen to the content, download it, share it, um, I'll be very happy about that. All right, sir. Thank you very much. And ladies and gentlemen, everybody that tuned in, thank you for showing up. I also appreciate that as well. Everyone that has contributed to this section, I appreciate everybody. Sir, thank you very much. This is, the, this is your debut on this program, I hope. And and uh, i am plead that you will answer our call next time when we call you sir most definitely all right thank you very much sir so that's how we are going to call it tonight thank you for the extra time i'm sorry if i take too much of your time i know what's it called the value that you have given to us is is highly is something that we really appreciate and we do not really wish to spend too much of your time like that so with that said my name remains Damola, but you can call me that fresh. Please go and uh, what's it called? Go and subscribe to our YouTube channel as well as um, which is Design Beyond Art. All of these sections and the previous sections are there. As a matter of fact, if you're already in the group, just go to the description of the group. You are going to see the link that will take you as directly to the playlist where all the previous sections are, and you're going to get access to every class that we have done on design charts. And also follow Design Beyond Arts on, on Instagram, on Twitter, on Facebook, Design Beyond Arts. Myself, personally, my Facebook is Dafresh, Dafresh Damlola Emmanuel. Yeah, Dafresh Damlola Emmanuel on Facebook. Instagram, Dafresh Oloni, but I don't, know, I don't know if you might want to do that because what you're going to get there is music content. And I'm really learning a lot of things about my music and design thing, but I'll figure it out, Shai. I know I'll be fine. <laughs> All right, so... Ladies and gentlemen, that's how we're going to call it tonight. Thank you very much. I really appreciate you for turning up. And this is how we're going to end the class tonight. Thank you and bye for now.